I thought it would take a few minutes to go through the recent Sandbridge Beach Houses photo series that I put out. Um, on Instagram, you're only able to share a few photos, and so there's 33 photos in all, and maybe if you're viewing this on an iPad, either on YouTube or uh, if you're on Instagram, you can turn your, I think you can tap on the video and turn your phone sideways and hopefully see it a little bit bigger. Um, some of these photos, like so many others on Instagram, it's nice to be able to see them a little bit bigger. And so I hope that this is one way that we can kind of walk through a photo series together and uh, see the uh, some of the nuances in some of the photos and kind of maybe my thinking behind taking them and why I think they're really fun, or at least it was fun for me. Uh, so let's begin just kind of walking through them. Um, when we were in Sandbridge this year, um, I had with me some film uh, and a light meter that was given to me by uh, an Instagram user in China that has his own camera shop and uh, 3D prints his own light meter that goes in the hot shoe of your 35 millimeter camera. And so uh, I was kind of searching for a reason to use those two things, the, the film that he gave me, which is a film stock that I had never used from China. Uh, it was just black and white 400 speed film. And, um, and then the light meter, I have never used a light meter like that where uh, it's in the hot shoe like that. And you can kind of use different settings to um, see what your rating should be. And so as the week went on, when we were in on vacation, finally, I, kind of said, you know, all these houses on the street around us are all so different from one another. Um, a lot of times in vacation areas, a lot of the houses are very similar or, um, I don't know, these days you see a lot of developments where all the houses look exactly the same. And it just stood out to me as being kind of an interesting subject to just take very plain, straight on photos of each house and be able to just kind of look at all the differences. And some of the themes that you'll see through this photo series is like, if you look at this first one here, um, the sand that's in front of the driveway, uh, a week before we arrived in Sandbridge, there was a really good downpour. Um, a lot of flooding had happened. And so that brought a lot of sand down into the streets and into people's properties. Um, not that the whole place isn't sand anyway, but they try to keep some of these areas clear of the sand, obviously, and um, it was just everywhere. And so here's just an example of that first, right in the front of the driveway here, just full of sand, you know, a few inches thick. And uh, I really like the the way that the they they dug down to put this driveway in. People handled this issue uh, differently through each of the houses, too. Um, I think this was called Casa uh, Cadillo. I'm not exactly sure. Um, each of them have names. A lot of them, I should ha say, have names. Um, but with this particular film, and perhaps the way I developed it, because I developed my film myself, um, some of the detail is definitely lost, but I still feel like they have like a really cool feel to them. Um one of the exceptions to taking the images sort of straight on uh, is this image because um, the dolphin in the overgrown trees on the right-hand side and the cat that is by the garage door. Now, if you're on Instagram and you're not seeing this very large, you, you probably can't even see it, but there's a cat that just was staring me down <laughs> by that garage door there. And uh, these overgrown trees... There's not a lot of trees in this area, and uh, or at least in the um, housing area of Sandbridge. Further down in the nature preserve, there's a lot of really great trees. But um, this person is definitely let the letting the nature take its course in in their front yard. A lot of dolphins down there. This house was being worked on. Um, not exactly sure what they were doing. And if you look at the post that is the rightmost post for that upper balcony, um, it's at an angle, I think. Um, 
I think I noticed it even when I was there. And again, look at the sand. Um, it's not just because of the construction zone. This this house was definitely had a lot of water in it. Uh, maybe they're doing repairs because of the water that happened. Maybe they're just sprucing up the place. I don't know. Uh, and there was a gentleman there grinding or cutting something there. And uh, so I did take this one a little bit different so that I could get him in the photo. This is a house that I thought, well, you could see this anywhere. Um, but there are some things to notice about it. Um, they keep a good yard. You know, it's well-groomed, but the sand is not here. So either this area didn't have that issue, which I don't think is possible, but I, they, I think they cleaned it up and they keep their place pretty nice. Um, there's also a metal horse in the right side of the home. Um, there's a lot of sculpture and stuff down in that area that people put in their front yards just to, I guess, give them some curb appeal. But this, I just thought this house, you know, this house could be anywhere. This house doesn't have to be a beach house. This is one of my favorite photos from the series. I think I led this series off with this po with this uh, photo most of the time. You're seeing these in order of the file name that they are on my computer. Um, I'll, if I had the number, I would put, I would name the file after the number, because um, these are all just scans of the. Uh, negatives, but this one, I just love the shape of the house, the lines of the roof, um, the fact that the sand is just swallowing it <laughs> pretty much, um, and then that windswept pine uh, in the front of the yard, just how the wind is obviously shaping the, the way that that tree looks. Um, the wind was not blowing, by the way, so the, the wind must act on that tree so much over time that it uh, it ends up looking like that. The name of this house is Legacy. It's a really great, great house. This is, uh, some of these homes are enormous down there. Um, you know, you have 20 people show up for vacation, and so they need spots for everybody, bathrooms for everybody. So some of these places are just big. I like the palms in this one. Some of them, some of the houses have palms, and I, I, I thought that was really neat. I'm not going to critique the photo. <laughs> I'm thinking as I go through this, like, oh, I wish I did this or that. Um, I'm not going to critique the photos because they are what they are. And if you'd like to critique them, you can scream those critiques into your pillow at night. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, speaking of palms. So again, here's a situation where it's like, okay, well, the palms are the feature of the house. You know, I got to this home and to take this photo, I actually had to walk across the street and stand in the neighbor's yard, I think, or in the neighbor's driveway to take this photo. And I thought, mm, should I move and, and, you know, get the house? But really the palms are or what make this place. And palms that are as big as you see here, I don't know the species of this palm, but based on what I, I don't know much about palm, but I just, I from what I know, I think they're very expensive when they get this big. So like this, you know, you see the two trees flanking each side of the house and then these beautiful, this beautiful palm in the front. I would imagine that this is a lot of money's worth of palms. Now, maybe they didn't ship them in this size and they just let them grow over time, but uh, this is, Pretty neat looking and pretty expensive, I imagine. House is pretty cool, too. Look how wide the staircase is going up, which I appreciate because if you get to a vacation home and you're lugging your food and your luggage up and down those areas and um, everything is kind of off the ground down there, so you're going to use the stairs no matter what. So I appreciate that they made really nice wide staircases. This one said private property right in the front. Um, I believe this to me, to my eye, looked more like a residence than the others did. You know, it's not very well kept up. Um, the kind of covered greenhouse-looking area in the right-hand side is a pool. And the no trespassing sign, or excuse me, private property sign just kind of strikes me as, hey, we don't want any vacationers near us, you know. 
and maybe they're not on the property that often. Maybe they only come down on the weekends or something, so they don't want people skedaddling through there or turning around in their driveway or whatever. But this isn't the nicest looking home in the world, but it's enormous. Like it's almost like a complex. If you look at the shape of the house, how far back that goes, it's a whole pool, and then it goes off to the sides, and it's a, it's really big. This one was at the end of a cul-de-sac, and I didn't notice this when I was there, and I'm, like, kicking myself. I had just taken a, taken a picture of a green tree snake. I may have shared that on Instagram, probably not on my public Instagram, but um, this, if you haven't noticed yet, there's a turtle in this shot. Um, he's right there in the middle of the driveway. <laughs> And I did not see him when I was there. You know, I got there. I'm looking at the palm or the, uh, I don't know if those are palms. I think those are just like, I don't know what I would call those. They might be palms. But, um, you know, and they have this like angled garden area with this big pole in the front. And I didn't know if that, maybe I had a sign at some point in the past. Like, why would you have to have such a big pole in the front? Um so I was kind of paying attention to other things, and I didn't see the turtle. And I'm a huge turtle fan, so I'm upset about that. But I love that he made an appearance. I love I love that after I scanned it in, I said, hey, there's a turtle in this. <clears throat> so here's another, how they de- here's another example of how they dealt with the sand. Now this sand, if you look, you can see the sand comes right out into the road as they drive out of the driveway. Their driveway has got to be... Six and five, six inches deep of sand right in front of those stairs, a foot of sand. So I'm not sure if they just don't keep up with it as much as other people do, or if this one just got particularly hit pretty hard. Um, and you'll notice there's a, a kind of a viewing area or deck up on top of the house. A lot of the um, homes in this area have that because um, to the uh, east is the ocean, um, where you can see the sunrise in the morning from your, you know, from your living room in the house or whatever. Um, but then the west side of the house is a bay and you can see the sunset. Am I saying that right? Yeah. The sunset is over there. So for people to be able to see the sunset, which is, you know, a big deal when you're on vacation, you love to see the sunset. And a lot of these homes have these little viewing areas on top of them. Some of them are pretty shaky, too. We've been in been in ones where you're like, oh, should uh, 12 of us be up here or not? <laughs> this one's really neat. It's like, what is this place? You know, everything's up on stilts, small little area in the front just to maybe have some stairs and some storage. And then the whole home is up on top. But like, what kind of house is this? It's like an RV with one of those pushouts areas, you know, and they just jacked it up and into the sky. I like the brick driveway or pavers or whatever they are. It's obviously an interesting looking home. I was thinking of leading with this photo too, just because it's a pretty good uh, example of how different all these homes are. One of the other themes that I forgot to mention is basketball hoops. So there is a lot of basketball hoops down there that are in some stage of disrepair. It does not look like they're used much. You can see on this one, if you're a basketball player, you know that you don't want to be playing basketball and all those weeds and everything over there. So if you shot here much, you wouldn't want to um, have all that there. You probably would have cleared it away. So I don't think that these are used very often. Um, the Statue of Liberty, which is probably difficult to see if you're, again, seeing this on a small screen, but on my screen I can see it pretty easily. Um, right below the stairs there. E- between each of the garage doors there's a small dead plant. <laughs> Otherwise, a pretty nondescript home. 
This is another one I took slightly at an angle. There's a boat in the front yard and all these rocks. And then there's a boat that you see there on the trailer. I don't know if you can see. There's an upside down boat. This was a pretty neat place. Um, well manicured. You can see the driveway's pretty wet. I'm not sure if they they may have you know come through and and washed it. It had rained, but I'm not sure how much. I don't remember exactly. There's only a few photos that have standing water in it because the whole place is sand. So if water gets on it, it just kind of goes right through, right down into the ground. You know. This place was had a corner lot on the bay. So the the water that you see on the left hand side, the that is the uh, back bay they call it in Sandbridge. It's a. Uh, I think it's fully salt water. I don't think it's brackish, but I don't know that. Um, we kayaked in that bay. Uh, each time that we down, we've been down there, we've kayaked in that bay. Um, it was a little bit rough this time because of the wind, but you know, you go down in October. This was mid October, so decent amount of wind. And when you're kayaking, uh, not only can the wind fight you just from movement, but then in a bay like this, um, and something I learned the hard way a few years ago. Uh, is when the wind is, you know, you picture this bay on the east coast of the United States, It's the bay is lengthwise, you know, north and south. So if the wind is coming from the south, it pushes all the water up into these, all the water up into the bay. So the water level rises quite a bit near all these homes, and um, there's probably some swamp, there's definitely some swampy areas that, get some water and then if the wind is coming north to south it pushes all the water out into the ocean and uh, it gets to the point where the water where the ground is actually visible dry ground is visible up at the top of the bay here and um i was in that once and so i've now learned through asking some locals and stuff that you look at your your wind speed and your wind direction and that'll give you a good indication about whether or not you should get in with your kayak. But this house here uh, is right on the corner. Beautiful spot. I mean, I, I'm sure that if I was in their backyard, that it'd be a great spot for the sunset every night. Nice front yard. Um, I decided to take this one with the, gra uh, the garbage cans in it because the garbage cans are a feature uh, in this area. Uh, you can tell how many people they expect to be in the home based on how many garbage cans there are. You know, some places have two, three, four. Some places have ten uh, of these garbage cans, all with their numbers on them. So I figured it was part of the part of the picture. It's a really neat, really neat place. No driveway here. Just use the front yard. fairly simple building it's kind of my style i the bigger homes obviously are needed because like i said there's a lot of people that come on vacation with a family or something but some of these nice little tiny spots i could imagine owning myself you know having a little spot on the beach real cheap um because land is a premium and it gets so wind battered i mean they're probably constantly doing repairs on these um homes between the water and the wind and salt and everything. Uh, so having a simple place that you can easily repair is kind of fun. Another basketball hoop, a derelict one. This is on the ocean side. I don't remember the Great Escape is the name of this one. Four trash cans, so... You know, maybe 10, 15 people can hang out here. I don't know what that thing is in the front yard, though. I don't know if that's just something from... It could be a water thing. I'm not sure. This is a nice place. Nothing flashy, but 
Looks nice. I love the I love the pines, pine bushes, whatever they are. I actually don't know what these are. I'm saying they're pine, but I don't know what they are. If you just look at it for a little while, you see all the little... There's not many homes these days that are made with such intricacy in the lattice work or the... You know, people just make simple buildings anymore. It used to be that things were made with real style, you know. Not anymore. Looks like this place had a had a really neat front feature. Of course, there's the dolphin there on the right. I like that that wall. It's a little different with the with the uh, stone. But otherwise, I think you know, people that have these vacation homes, they it's probably a difficult task to keep it nice because. People come down on vacation and they probably don't treat the houses very nice. More sand. This place is called a secret paradise. It must be tough to name a house down there, you know. Do you do you do something catchy, weird, funky, tongue in cheek? What do you do? Does it have to be funny? It's interesting. You can see somebody must have pulled out. Now, this was on a Saturday? I think this was a Saturday. So, many people would have been... No, this couldn't be Saturday because we left on Saturday. So, this must have been a Friday. So, either people had already left for the week, you know... Um, of course, that time of year, it's less people down there anyway, but um, looks like there was a nice palm here on the right-hand side. Maybe I should have backed up slightly, but I don't know. I don't remember why I didn't do that. Love this little place. It's like just a, this is like a structure that you would happen upon, you know, if, if it wasn't in a vacation area. It's just in its environment. It's part of the landscape. Again, super simple. I like to think that the person or persons that live here go out fishing every morning. You know. On the beach. Like, in other words, they they live the life of being on the beach. The... the the home isn't the important part. They they do things outside. Of course, I don't see any indication of like stuff that they own. You know, it's like they don't have anything. Hmm. It's very rare that a house is not visible from the road. So. When I took this photo, I thought, I'm still going to take it straight on because um, that's the the different thing about this particular home is that you can't see it from the road as much. It doesn't happen often down there. And again, the trees just take over. Probably tough to see on this one, but there's two, uh, I don't know, five foot tall sandals on this house next to the window on the right hand side there. There is a sign in front of it that says what this house is named. I don't remember. I might have saved it on the file name. I don't know. But uh, I like these trees that are in the front yard. Um, it's probably pretty nice to have trees, I would imagine, because if it's, I mean, it must get very windy down there all the time. So having a, having some trees could not only provide shade for you in the, in the summertime when it gets really hot, keep your house a little cooler, but then also when the winds really kick up during hurricane season and stuff, having some trees could either be a liability because it can smash into your house or the fact that it 
cuts down on how much wind is actually hitting your home and stuff. So I don't know if that's why they keep these or if they just like the way they look or they don't feel like cutting them down, whatever it is. But these are the kinds of things that go through my mind when I'm looking at these places. But I love the sandals on this one. This one's called, called this one, I think it's called Nancy's Fancy. <laughs> I'd like to know what is up with that thing on the right-hand side. Can you go in there when you're in the house? Is that just storage on the bottom? It looks like there's a door there on the bottom. Is there a window on the other side so you can see out? Or is it just like a... Like what is going on with that thing? Is it an elevator? Some of these houses do have elevators. Which is nice because if you have to go up three flights of stairs like we did to get to the kitchen when you first show up, we, we cook all of our food and everything while we're down there. So grabbing all of our food and coolers and water and everything else that you bring and you got to hoof it up three flights. Um, it would be nice. It would be nice to have an elevator. And, and a lot of them do have elevators. I'm looking at this now, and I, I like this picture better than I thought I did before. Not the picture itself. I like this house better than I thought I did before. I love this fence. It's a really... I've never seen a fence like that. Think about it for a minute. Have you ever seen a fence like that? This one you can see right through back to the RV park that is on the bay. Campground slash RV park, I think. I forget the name of it. It's got a funny name, you know, like Paradise or something, you know. Um, you can see the standing water in the front. And it's just like a double-wide trailer up on a up on some stilts, you know. Um, this, probably, this probably gets really wet in this area. Um... The fact that the cement that they made their driveway with has cracked so many times and everything kind of leads me to believe that either it was a really bad job doing the cement or this this ground moves around a lot. And they don't get freezing like we do up here in Pennsylvania. So um, it's probably not from freezing water over time. It's probably just from water, 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 water all the time. Otherwise, a simple little place. This is one of my favorites from the whole series. I only have like three or four. I've probably said that too, right? I hope. I didn't say it for every one, but... I don't know. Just the lines of the building with the palm on the left. It's just got a good balance to it. And I don't know what the purpose of the cone with the rope is. Because is it just so you don't park on one side of the driveway? You can clearly park on the other side of the driveway. They just don't want you to block that side of the driveway. I don't know. There's got to be a reason. I will forever wonder and never know. Some things I can think about. What if they want to park their boat on that side all the time and they never want anybody to park on that side because every now and then they show up and they they pull a boat in there or something. Um, I don't know. I like the staircase. I like how it's wider on the bottom than it is up on top. Love the Marlin looking thing on the front of the house. Interesting that the air conditioner's on this side. If they put it on the left side of the house, you know, it wouldn't be out front, you know, where you could see it, but they didn't. It was right there. There might have been a basketball hoop on this one, too, but I couldn't fit it in. I don't remember. See the garbage cans? Again, one, two, three, four, five, at least. A lot of people probably stay here. They've got that. I forget what that's called. If you're still listening to this, congratulations that you've gotten this far. But if you know what that's called in the front where they have those just kind of like rows of two by fours all the way down that make like a kind of a roof, you know, I see that a lot where it just blocks just enough of the sun and stuff. It's an interesting design. People sometimes grow wisteria and stuff on those kind of things. Is there a name for that? Love these pines. I like the parking underneath. It's pretty neat. I don't know. I just shed 
It's like, why don't we build houses like that up here? Off the ground? I guess it would be freezing. It would be freezing up here if you did that. Um, even people that have crawl spaces and stuff, you can feel it in your feet when you're in their house up here. Um, if somebody has a basement that even is just mildly temperature controlled, you can tell a difference. So yeah, if we were up off the ground here, up here like this, then our floor would just be frozen all the time. Cost us a million dollars to heat the house. You can see where I'm standing on this one to be able to get the trees in because you can see the neighbor's mailboxes in the front on the opposite side of the street. Also interesting is that there's rope around the left side tree. This place is obviously for sale, right? Does that say it's for sale? Yeah. So there's rope there on the left side of the tree. Is it? Did it crack? Is it trying to keep it up? Is it just a decoration type thing? What's going on there? Oceans 5. With a Z. So maybe Daniel Ocean has a little place here in Sandbridge that he hides out from the cops from. There's a cactus in the front yard. It's slightly off-center, which bothers me. <laughs> it would be nice if it was shifted slightly to the left, that cactus. A little bit of standing water. But otherwise, it looks like people turn around a lot in that... Maybe they do. Or maybe just the grass doesn't grow in that area. But certainly, it looks like a lot of people walk through that yard or they turn around with their cars or something there. Or maybe they park a second or a third car over there when there's too many people. This house is called Sandbridge 2. I was unable to find Sandbridge 1. I'd like to go right through that middle area and walk through the back and see what they've got going on back there. But I didn't. It's, it's tough to be so... have such self-control, isn't it? 3652 this is. I hope you're enjoying these as much as I am. Even these simple ones. The more you look at them, like look at the fence post that goes into the sand mound. Is the rest of the fence under there? On the left-hand side, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a the beginning of a fence. Does it just have a fence post that goes into the sand there and then it, that's it? Or is it literally under there and it got blown over one time and they just left it? I shall return with a shovel someday. To find out. This one is called the Italian Pearl. There's a couple statues in the yard on the right hand side, um, all the way towards the back there. You got the columns when you first drive in the driveway, so you know, they're really doing the whole Roman thing. The whole Italian thing. I like that they put lattice up, like so that the hole that would normally be in the home and they store stuff underneath. They put some lattice there, right by the stairs. So that's kind of neat, so that, you know, your stuff is kind of private back there. I also like this Toyota truck. I would like that Toyota truck. Another basketball hoop on the left hand side. But notice the wheelchair by the stairs. A wheelchair that is made to go in sand. With those big, like, thick, airy tires. But this place is pretty cool. It's got interesting lines to it. Pretty modern looking. They put poles in the front of the house, maybe so people don't drive right through. Were those garage doors in the building at one point in the past? And they converted them into windows and just made a big living room and stuff down there? Um... And they don't want people to drive right through or whatever because they put some poles up in the front on the right there. I don't know. I like the evergreen, uh, the evergreen tree or whatever that is. This place is neat. But I just thought the juxtaposition of the 
basketball hoop and the wheelchair was made it interesting. And then the last shot from the series is an empty lot. I'm assuming they'll build here again. I don't know why they took it down. But if you'll notice, the, gar the, the garbage cans still remain. So there was obviously a decent home here. You know, one, two, three, four, five uh, garbage cans at least. And so they're still there. Um, it has a boundary fence. And then in the back left portion of the lot, there is a hot tub still there. So somebody was like, hey, listen, you can knock down the house, but we got to keep the hot tub. We love the hot tub. <laughs> uh, it's prime. Uh, I don't know if this is prime real estate, actually, because it's right on the ocean, but the public beach access is right there. So I'm imagining you'd have to deal with a lot of cars, a lot of riffraff. Maybe they're going to convert this into a parking lot for the public beach because there is almost no parking there to go onto the public beach. So maybe they'll do that. I don't know. But clearly somebody was back there with a car. I'll be interested to find out I'm get, when I when I return I, next year, year after that, whatever. Whenever we go back, I'm sure we will. It'll be interesting to know. So here's the kit I was using um, when I talked about that light meter. Um, I'll leave the I'll leave the uh, account on Instagram's name in the description of this video on Instagram, and also link to it from YouTube if I put this up on YouTube. But um, my Canon AE1. Uh, program, it's Canon AE1 program with uh, I think it's the my 35 to 70 lens. Um, I did do, I did use the zoom a little bit here and there, you know, um, f mostly for composition purposes. If I if I just couldn't get close enough or whatever, but um, and then this film that w he sent me, uh, this Pan 400 film, which I thought incorrectly when I first got it in the mail, I thought, oh, this is probably just Fomapan rewrapped or something. Um, because I never even heard of this. And obviously it says Pan 400. So I'm like, okay, this is probably just Fomapan. And maybe it is. I don't know. But I recently saw a photo of an image. A photo of an image. I recently saw a photo of a camera store in Japan. And there was rows of this stuff on the shelves. So this is being sold in Japan quite actively, whatever this is. I may have to do more research on this film stock, but <clears throat> I thought it really made for some interesting photos. I hope you enjoyed this uh, style of going through a photo set. You know, there's 33 images, so it's tough to do it any other way on Instagram. And uh, I might return in, with this kind of style in the future. But either way, have a good day.